Now, everyone cares about the environment, I hope. Now, the next question is, what have you done lately to help the planet? What have you done lately? Feel free, just popcorn style. What? Recycling, okay, and then? Uh, packing food home, okay, not wasting food. What else? Now, amazingly, everyone cares about the environment, but we don't have a lot of action that we take on a regular basis on actually how to help it. So we started, my team and I, we started an organization and a social venture five years ago in Hong Kong and now spans over 30 countries in the world. The movement and the social venture is called Green Monday. So by the end of this talk, which is 16 minutes and two seconds later, I want all of you to bring home an action, something that you all can do to help yourself and to help the planet now. So our whole goal is about creating a world that is better, and not just better, but in a sustainable way. And what is exactly wrong with the planet we are facing? Uh, and what are the most urgent crises? Now, we know about the benefits of globalization, but it comes at a cost. In fact, it may be one of the most threatening crises uh, that comes along with all the industrialization uh, and growth in economy of the world. And that crisis is called climate change. Now, when we think of, of climate change, when we talk about climate change, um, what are the causes? What makes climate change happen? I think a lot of people know it is related to carbon footprints or carbon emission. But what caused carbon emission? Some of you will say it's from the energy sector. Some of you will say it's from transportation. Now, both of those are correct. But actually, there is an elephant in the room. There is a huge industry that is causing damage today and for many, many years, decades, centuries down the road that we completely overlook, but yet it may be the most important element of sustainability of humanity and the planet, and that is food. Now, clearly, without food, we cannot sustain. But the way we are eating right now, the way we're eating collectively by 7 billion people on the planet today is absolutely unsustainable, and in fact, it is killing our planet. Now, first of all, livestock industry is one of the biggest costs or culprits for carbon footprints. Collectively, animals, factory farming, create more carbon than all transportation combined. And I'll show you another slide on how huge the impact is. And then second is, because 7 billion people on the planet are eating so much food, particularly meats, it is a very inefficient way to use our resources in terms of land and in terms of water. And I think we all know that we do not have unlimited clean water on the planet, and we do not have unlimited arable land to grow food. So by growing so much or raising so much livestock to, to make food, it actually is drawing resources from the future, which means down the road, not only are we not going to enjoy the food that we have today, but chances are we're going to suffer globally huge food shortage. Now, on carbon footprint, how bad is livestock? Now, we know there are 7 billion people on the planet. But how many animals are there? Now, first, let me ask again, this is a real question. Is how many chicken do you think there are on this planet? I think most of you eat chicken, right? How many chicken are there on this planet? Any guess? We have 7 billion people, but we have 20 billion chickens. How many cows are there on this planet? 1.5 billion. These 1.5 billion cows create the type of carbon, or particularly it's a gas called methane, 
which is 25 times worse than CO2, and over the course of 100 years, is actually about 30-something to 40 times worse than CO2 in terms of greenhouse gas impact. So, if we think global warming is a significant issue and we want to do something about it, actually, there is one simple step that we can all take right now, and it is so simple, but the impact will be enormous. Simply by cutting beef consumption. Now, I'm not asking you to become a vegan tomorrow. Simply by cutting beef consumption. We can save 5.5 billion metric tons of CO2, which is actually more than, or at least equivalent to 10 countries combined. And these 10 countries are Canada, Brazil, Australia, Italy, Spain, Korea, France, Japan, Germany, and UK. Or if you exchange all that to one single superpower, it's called the United States. So even if Donald Trump pulls out of the Paris Climate Treaty, even if he doesn't care, we can counter it. We can all care simply by reducing beef consumption. Beef happens to be the worst when it comes to water, when it comes to land, and when it comes to carbon emission. Between a cow and a car, most people would think the car does more damage, right? Actually, it's not even close. It's the car, it's the car that gives out way more carbon. But that's not all. We have another crisis, which also is definitely about sustainability, and that is public health. People are getting cancer, people are getting heart disease, people are getting high cholesterol and suffering from diabetes at a way younger age than it used to be. And the reason for that is, again, overnutrition, and that comes from overconsumption of meat. Nowadays, in developed countries, our problem, collectively, in general, is not the lack of food, but it's the overnutrition. We have one billion people on the planet who are suffering from lack of food, but we have 1.5 billion people who are suffering from overnutrition, which cause all these problems. So the WHO, actually listed processed meat as the highest hazard, the highest degree of hazard when it comes to causing cancer. The same level of hazard as tobacco. So it is not an exaggeration to say that meat actually is the new tobacco. And the reason for that is because we are consuming so much, there's so, there are a lot of chemicals that are added to factory farming nowadays. All the, a lot of the food that we consume regularly, chances are they're filled with antibiotics, they're filled with hormones, they're filled with chemicals that 30 years ago was not the norm, but today, chances are when we are consuming meat, we are all eating secondhand of those chemicals. So what we do as a social venture group is we create a movement of Green Monday and ask everyone, you don't have to consume, you don't have to buy, you don't have to install an app, you can just act. And this action is, for example, to go green or plant-based at least one day a week. We use Monday because it is symbolic to a new start, but of course you can choose green any day you want. You can do green Sunday, you can do green Friday, you can do green lunch, green dinner. The idea is change the portion. The second arm of our social venture group is called Green Common, which is our retail and distribution arm to make plant-based food available, to make plant-based food appealing, and to make it convenient. And then finally, we have an arm called Green Monday Ventures, which is to partner and invest in entrepreneurs to build solutions to this huge global problem. Now, with the three arms, for example, with how to shift behavior, there are many ways to do it. Cutting down on 
the portion of meat is one way, picking a particular day is another, or as I alluded to at the beginning, simply by cutting the type of meat that makes the most negative impact, which happens to be beef. And all of this is some form of Green Monday. And if one person, if you go green, not one day, but 365 days, we can all make a difference. And it is totally quantifiable. One person going vegetarian for a full year, you can save or you can indirectly plant 66 trees. It is equivalent to cutting driving for seven months, and you can save the water that can be used by 800 other people. So this movement has gone viral and it has gone global. From big corporations to embassies to governments to certainly individuals, and last but not least, schools. There are over 600 universities around the world. And of course, if we're talking about food, restaurant is definitely a place we start as well. Now, we don't just target vegetarian restaurants. In fact, we deliberately choose to work with restaurants that serve meat. And we ask them, can they incorporate more green dishes on their menu, introduce a healthy green section, and launch green menus? And amazing enough, we actually can work with McDonald's um, to ask them to improve their menu and add more green. Now, in Hong Kong, in five years, Green Monday has gone from something that nobody knows about to 45% of young people, 33% of women, and who know about Green Monday. And most important of all is a million, 1.6, 1.7 million people are practicing some form of Green Monday. And this is the collective impact. Just now I show you the impact from one person. This is the impact from 1.6, 1.7 million people. And Hong Kong is just the beginning. These are the places that we're expanding to. Singapore actually is one of the countries that we come very regularly, and we look to partner with schools, restaurants, corporations, just like how we do it um, in Hong Kong. And this is one of the map that shows our global reach. Now, knowing the problem is one thing, but coming up with solutions is the second major piece of it. Now, if I tell you, meat cause so much damage to the planet and to us, then I don't think we can all just switch to salad tomorrow, right? If I just ask you to eat salad every day, I think most people will say no to that. So the idea is how can we create a new experience, or we call it a food 2.0 experience. And this is not just done by Green Monday, but rather this is a global collective effort by many investors, by many entrepreneurs, by many aspiring chefs who are joining forces to coming up with new ideas and new solutions that are tasty, that are healthy, and that are sustainable. And Green Common is developed, is designed to be the hub for that. So right now in Hong Kong, we have four locations of Green Common. Number five is coming very soon. And we are bringing in exciting, innovative, healthy food products and brands to Hong Kong and then to the whole region in Asia to bridge the gap between, first of all, not knowing what is the right thing to eat to knowing and from knowing to doing. And we don't call it the vegetarian menu. We call it the future menu. Some of these food, or a lot of these actually are food tech companies that are using innovative food science using plant-based ingredients and coming up with products that are very similar to what people are accustomed to, but in a much healthier way. Of which, one of the products is from a company called Beyond Meat. Beyond Meat is a food tech, food science startup based in LA. And the investors of Beyond Meat, you may not have heard of this company, but you definitely have heard of the investors. Uh, Bill Gates is one of the investors. Biz Stone and Evan Williams, who are the founders of Twitter, are among the investors. And the idea is coming up with food that we're used to, such as a burger, but it's entirely plant-based 
And in fact, from a nutrition standpoint, it is far superior to the food that we're eating. It has more protein, it has more iron, it has no cholesterol because when you are eating veg vegetables or plant-based food, there's no cholesterol. And it is hormone-free, GMO-free, antibiotic-free. These are all the problems that we see in food nowadays. We launched the Beyond Burger in Hong Kong just about two and a half, three months ago, and the reception has been overwhelming. People are actually calling it uh, the Tesla of burger. You know, the Tesla, right? You know, it is a car, it looks like a car, but inside, actually, there's nothing that is like a car. There's no engine, it doesn't use petrol. Um, it, on the exterior, it has every character or feature of a car, but inside is completely different. Same thing with, for example, the Beyond Burger. And there are many, many more different ingredients that we are talking about, not just meat substitute, but for example, dairy substitute. If we are talking about animals, of course, there are many different types of products that are from animals too, and dairy is one of them. And there are many new products such as almond milk, quinoa milk, uh, rice milk, that are equally healthy or actually healthier, but without that environment, the environmental damage of livestock. And these are some of the new products that we are creating entirely plant-based. And through building the profile of these companies, we are also distributing them to supermarkets, to restaurants, um, and to food service and online. So the idea is how to make it common. And a lot of events that come with it. Now, these are corporate events that we do to really penetrate the education. Now, finally, from a Green Monday venture standpoint, the investment arm, it is about coming up with solutions. If people are not consuming as much milk, if people are not consuming as much fast food, and the healthy food, organic food market is, is growing, what that means is we need entrepreneurs, we need young talents, we need brilliant people who are developing healthy, sustainable, and people-empowering solutions. So I hope each one of you, by understanding the last 18 minutes of contents, we can all make a difference. And there's one thing that is on your seat, and I want everyone to raise that, and that is, I think most of you, or all of you, have this pledge card on your chair. If you can just raise it and you know, pledge to the planet, pledge to yourself, and I'll go, I'll say three, two, one, and we can say, we pledge to Green Monday, and this is an action that we can all take to help ourselves and to help our planet. So I'm going to start the count. Three, two, one. We pledge to Green Monday. Thank you. <laughs>